Hello. This is Gary Pinnell with BibleChristian.org. And I want to welcome you to our Bible study today. We are in Philippians chapter 3. And uh, see if you can think what the theme of the book of Philippians is. See if anybody can remember that. I'll read the first verse and see what you think. Maybe it will come back to you. <laughs> okay. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord, for we, for me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Rejoice, rejoicing, joy. That's the theme of this book of Philippians. All right. Now, uh, let's just uh, turn back to a passage in Ephesians. And remember that as you do Bible study, you're comparing spiritual with spiritual. Second Corinthians talks about. In other words, you compare this verse with other verses. You don't make take one verse and make that into a doctrine or something. Hello, Kathy. Lord bless you, sister. So with uh, this word rejoicing in mind, or joy, uh, rejoice, he talks about lots, or joy, rejoicing, the theme of the book of Philippians. So now, though, we're going to go back just uh, one book, back to Ephesians chapter 5, and let's look at verse uh, 18 and following there. See what it says. It says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation or intemperance, uh, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Oh, interesting. Uh, wouldn't uh, singing, having a melody in your heart, go along with rejoicing? Yes. And Paul is very clear here about what should be happening in our hearts. Now, he had a horrible life to, re to put behind him. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. I look forward. And that's the way we have to do in our lives. Uh, if there's things that, of course, that are in the past, all of us, I'm sure, have, that we have to forget about that. Uh, look forward to what God is going to do in our lives in the future. And so we can rejoice in Him. And we're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, that is, um, there is initial filling of the Holy Spirit or baptism of the Holy Spirit, but it continues on in our life. It is to continue all of our life through after we're saved and is continually asking the Lord please give me a new filling of the Holy Spirit today and if we do ask that then we see again what happens uh, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit look at that verse 18 again what does it say speaking to one another in Psalms that would be like uh, hymns or uh, some of the psalms that have been put to music okay that's the the, the, the psalms put to music and then hymns that those would be uh the ones that <laughs> the old standbys that amazing grace and so on and spiritual songs the songs that the lord gives you singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for some things, no, all things, to God the Father in the name 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I think that's uh, not always easy, is it? And at least in my life, it's not. Uh, I can lose my temper really, really quickly. And uh, so I have to ask the Lord, help me. And uh, we're going to go to, but then I ask for a refilling of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to go to, uh, we just looked at a book before, Ephesians 5.18 and following, and and uh, what's going to help us to be filled with joy. Now let's go to Colossians 3.16, a book just right after this, Colossians 3.16 comparing spiritual with spiritual. So as we look at 316, it says there, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in wisdom and all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in what? In Psalms? Hmm. Uh, singing the psalms uh, and then hymns you know those uh, classic <laughs> songs in the church and spiritual songs mm, Lord giving us melody in our hearts singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatever you do in word or deed or do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thanks to God and Father, the God the Father, through him. Okay, so that's interesting, isn't it? That he, Paul emphasizes that if anybody should be discouraged or complaining, <laughs> it could be Paul. Because as you look at in Second Corinthians, all the things that he went through, far worse than any of us will probably ever face in our life. And he still said that we're to be filled with joy and uh, rejoicing. So let's go ahead and then look further into what else. Uh, and how we're supposed to put that into practice, okay? Then verse 2. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. Okay, beware of dogs. Um, these are, could be considered several different things. One would be moral people that even sell their bodies uh, for immoral purposes or for money. And uh, it could also be uh, those that are just raging to tear up uh, Christians and uh, persecute them and harm them. Beware of evil workers. Are there evil workers in the world today? Oh, yeah. There are people that are blaspheming God putting up signs if Jesus were to come back, uh, then we will kill him again. Uh, people saying, oh, the Bible doesn't talk about homosexuality uh, and whether you could do that or not. No, 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 no. There's all sorts of things that people are saying today that are wrong and attacking God and the church Christianity says, beware of the mutilation. That's the Jews were saying, oh, you have to be circumcised in order to be saved. No, that's a, Paul calls, calls it the mutilation. At one point he says, they should cut off their own, their own selves. In other words, to they shouldn't uh, cut you, they should cut themselves off from uh, teaching this and from uh, that false doctrine. Verse 3, for we are the circumcision. So there is a circumcision, a spiritual circumcision that both men and women that are born again Christians have. 
for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. In other words, we've uh, we've said we've been set apart by Christ uh, when we're saved. Uh, he cuts off that old sin nature, and he gives us the spirit of the Lord. And so he says, rejoice in Christ Jesus. So what are we supposed to be doing because we're saved? We're rejoicing in Christ Jesus. We shouldn't be complaining. I have to remind myself of this lot and have no confidence in the flesh. So uh, the flesh has been cut off. Uh, and in a sense, that's the spiritual, we're talking about the the old nature, the sin nature, this nature that we were born with. This should be cut away and we shouldn't have any confidence in the flesh we should put our confidence in the lord verse 4 though i also might have confidence in the flesh if anybody could be you know confident uh, paul should be because he was not only did he persecute the church but he was um um a jew born the eighth day of the tribe of benjamin he says uh, i mean born the eighth day circumcised the eighth day of the tribe of benjamin and uh, he trained uh, to be a pharisee uh, to be on the sanhedrin uh, the 70 leaders of israel but he didn't get that far the lord uh, took him out of that but he could boast in that if he wanted to boast if anyone else thinks he may have his, have confidence in the flesh, I am more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Okay, so... Jews looked at their pedigree, uh, which tribe they were from, um, then how, what did they do with their life? Uh, being a, a Pharisee, which believed all of the Old Testament, by the way, the Sadducees were not believing any of that. And uh, they don't believe in angels, they don't believe in the resurrection. But Paul was very conservative. He believed all the Old Testament. He did believe in angels. He did believe in the resurrection. Uh, and so he was really strict to keep the law and uh, really strict with himself. So he had lots in, in the flesh to be proud of. In other words, in his old life, if he wanted to be. But then again, though, uh, because he believed it so strongly, he was zealous and he was persecuting Christians who didn't believe uh, that they needed to keep the law uh, as far as the uh, ceremonial law and all that. And so he said, oh, no, 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 you have to. And so I'm going to persecute you and stop you from being a Christian. Well, that was Paul's life. So as far as being a Jew, and I'm sure there would be Jewish people reading this, they would understand who boy he was strict he was uh, he was more zealous than we are and that sort of thing but then he goes on to say hmm ah oh, verse seven but what things were gained to me these i have counted loss for christ yet indeed i also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness, which is from God by faith, 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. And I don't think he just means, uh, when he says resurrection from the dead, just being uh, raised from the dead, because obviously all of us as Christians are going to be raised from the dead if we pass away or when the rapture comes. But he's talking about uh, a resurrection where he is in going into heaven and his glorified body, but the Lord is uh, giving him a real entrance. So it talks about in scripture. Uh, just think about that. And I shared with you before, when I was in the military, uh, that I was a Christian, but there were some things that I was ashamed of that I wouldn't uh, be proud of talking about. And, and so I shouldn't have been doing and that sort of thing. And so I knew I was going to heaven, but I would be ashamed as I went. And I don't want to go that way to heaven. I want to go to heaven knowing that I've lived the life that God has given me to live and to walk humbly with him, uh, love mercy and do justly as uh, and Micah talks about and walk humbly with your God. That's the way I want to be, meet the Lord. And uh, so uh, Paul too, that's what he wanted. He wants to, you know, not only go to heaven, yes, but he wants to be walking with the Lord. Uh, verse 12, not that I have already obtained, because, you know, all of us have, will not be perfect till we get to heaven. There are people that teach that Christians are perfect. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. In fact, um, we need to look at that. First uh, John 1, i put the marker there. Let's just go to, uh, I've, you know, mentioned it before, uh, but I think that we need to look at it again. Uh, so, uh, if we can find it here. Okay. First John, Peter. Well, right now, uh, we'll come back to that. I want to, I'll just mention it so you know. Um, okay, let's mention that. First John 1, 9, well, First John 1, 8, and then 9, and then 10. First uh, John 1, 8 talks about, if we say that we have no sin, just paraphrasing it here, if we say that we have no sin, the truth of God is not in us and we're not really saved if we say that we have no sin. Okay, uh, because we have to realize that we are sinners saved by grace. And then it says, though if we sin, okay, First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, some people, what they do with that verse is they say, oh, that's a salvation verse. No, it's not a salvation verse. This was, first John was written to Christians, my beloved, and so on he talks about there. So he's talking to Christians, and he says that if we sin, because we're not supposed to sin, of course, obviously, and uh, but if we sin, we confess our sins. So if we confess our sins, and then, um, and by the way, in um, James chapter 5, when they're praying for the sick, it says, if they have sinned. All right. So then they would confess your sin to the Lord and ask his forgiveness. But then if we have sinned, we... Uh, if we say that we have no sin, we make him a liar and the truth is not in us. But then we ask God's forgiveness. He cleanses us. 
we uh, go on. <laughs> it's like a child that's learning how to walk. They fall down. <laughs> they got to get up and go again. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So Paul says he's not he's not perfect yet. Okay. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, that helps. Uh, remember, your sin is in the sea of God's forgetfulness, and you're not supposed to be putting a sign there, uh, or you should put a sign, say, no fishing. And then our sins are taken away as far as the east is from the west, and uh, we are children of God. We're saved by grace through faith. And so that's what he had to remind himself of, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He, he wanted to be rewarded by the Lord. And that's not wrong. Uh, that's not our um, goal. Our goal is to walk with the Lord, but to uh, then he, we know that he will give us uh, rewards and the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, as you're walking in the Lord, you're, you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, you're continually asking for filling, you're walking in the Spirit, have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. You know, think about what Paul is saying here. He knows what he's talking about. The Lord has given him this to tell us. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already obtained, let us walk by us the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. So you're a Christian, and you've uh, walked with the Lord for some time, and I ha I'm a Christian. I walked with the Lord for some time. So let us walk by the same rule, to love one another, of course, uh, to love God and to love one another. Let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in following my example. And note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. So all Christians are supposed to walk like Paul walked, walking close to the Lord day by day, ready if need be uh, to Go home to be with the Lord at any moment. And that's what the rapture is about, too. We look forward to life. We don't look forward to death. Verse 18. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. They pretend like they're Christians. There are some like that. There are some that are outside the church. Uh, and they mock Christianity. They're Jews, but they just they don't believe that Jesus died and rose again. They don't believe that he's their Messiah, even though in Isaiah 53, 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, speaking of Jesus, the iniquity of us all. Uh, Psalm 22 gives all the things that would happen to Jesus, what he would say and do when he was on the cross, what they would do around him. And so they have no excuse. And that uh, it really uh, that really hurt Paul to, he said, and now tell you even weeping. So he's crying as he was thinking about that, weeping, that strong crying, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. So they've chosen to not accept the Messiah, Jesus, whose end is destruction. They have nothing to look forward to but death and eternal separation from God and a terrible place of punishment, whose God is their belly, 
These are people that are just sensual. They're just living for this life. They're not thinking about eternity one way or the other. Their God is their belly. So they just... Everything uh, that is temporary and whose glory is in their shame. Their glory is in immorality and homosexuality and pride, wickedness, stealing, murdering people. Uh, that's uh, actually shameful, all those things. Hating their mother and father and their relatives and people. Uh, just shameful things. Committing adultery, fornication, um, aborting babies, uh, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven. So our citizenship, we're already citizens of heaven. We're, uh, as Pilgrim's Progress talks about, we're pilgrims. We're going through a lot of things, but our citizenship is in heaven where we're going. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, we're waiting for you, Jesus. Even so, come quickly. Let's remember Revelation talks about that. Verse 21, who will transform our lowly body. And so right now we have, we blow it. We have mistakes. We do sin on occasion. We ask God's forgiveness and our body is so weak. The body is weak. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Uh, Paul says another place, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. That's what I'm looking forward to. Isn't that what you're looking forward to? I believe so. According to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. We can look forward to chapter 4, where he talks about, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. All right. But right now, uh, we're living in this body. We have to walk carefully in the Holy Spirit and uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. All right, let's go to prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your love to us. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for Christians that are suffering around the world for you and languishing maybe in jail or or prison or work camps or whatever. Lord, in North Korea and in China, in Iran, uh, Somalia, uh, many, many places in the world. Um, and Lord, I just pray that you'll be with them, strengthen them, help, help them through this hard time Thank you, Father. And pray for us that we will walk pleasing to you at all times. And the Lord, if we stumble and fall, that we can, uh, remember 1 John 1, 9. And if, I, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we thank you, Father. And remembering, too, that you've said all things work together for good to them that love you and are called according to your purpose. And so we remember this as well. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name and rejoicing. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody who believes that, please say amen. Amen. All right, the Lord bless you, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. Uh, shalom.